indigenous preservation. The preservation of the indigenous. With so much effort and attention today given to the preservation of our earth, it is easy to look towards the future and forget the past. When we look in any direction of our world at any point in time, you will find horrible atrocities performed on the indigenous peoples of all lands across all nations. Their lives were taken in exchange for the promise of an even more productive future for the civilized world. Yet has it not always been the indigenous tribes who have preserved this earth since our known beginning? This is how we got here. All around the world, the ancient protectors of our sacred earth have been systematically cast aside to make way for modernization. And whereas progress is good, we must always remember that a tree will never grow to its full height when its roots fade away. Then as now, a promise for a more productive future slowly gave way to the largest mass extinction of a people in world history. That did not occur in a faraway land, and it was not done by the hands of infamous villains such as Hitler or ISIS. It happened right here, in America, and it did not happen overnight. In less than 300 years, the European colonization of America brought foreigners from all lands in search of a better life. And this opportunity came on the backs of our natives. Over the course of the country's history, over 100 million Native Americans were systematically exterminated as the desire to create a more perfect union under God took precedence over the values that define the meaning of humanity. As we have progressed as a nation, our natives have continued to suffer from drastic reduction in protected lands to being forcefully removed from them. They have taken the blunt end of the stick to make way for trains, highways, military bases, airports, as well as governmental, and most recently, private enterprise. Time and time again, they have been used for political gain and influence. From presidential elections to fighting international wars, the natives of these lands have been used as pawns for causes and agendas. And what respect have they been shown in return? I ask you, have there ever been another people who have given more for this country? Many things have been done in the past 100 years to make amends for the losses of these natives, but the promises of just yesterday have given way to the deceit of today. Our government continues to give with one hand and take with the other, allegedly on the people's behalf, and through the private interest of greedy corporations once again these natives are the ones that are losing. Whereas we were not here during these horrific tragedies in American history, we are here now, and we have the opportunity to stop the oppression of sacred lands and our indigenous caretakers of our beautiful country. Not only has our government yet again betrayed the natives by not honoring their land and their right to preserve it, but it has turned a blind eye to their basic civil liberties allowing for this private corporation to hire goons to use attack dogs and chemical warfare on peaceful tribes and their supporters. This $3.7 billion pipeline is scheduled to transport 500,000 barrels of oil per day over and around various sacred Native American lands. This pipeline would cross right under the Missouri River at Lake Oahe, the reservation's main source of drinking water. A leak or oil spill could prove disastrous for them and all of the communities who rely on this clean water supply across numerous states. The Texas-based energy company assured the government that there would be no risk of contamination. But should the word of a company being currently sued in four states for contaminating waters matter? This pipeline was originally supposed to go farther north but officials in the state had blocked that pathway out of concerns that a leak may harm the state capital and adjusted its direction to its current path. This project may be starting in North Dakota, but this is just the beginning. Phase two of this project shows that the pipeline would continue down the center of our country, going through many states, three of which have the highest concentration of Native American population in mainland America.
In the first 20 miles alone, Energy Transfer Partners, the company building the pipeline, has already bulldozed over ancient ancestral burial site, sparking an outrage within the local community. This is what started the national attention. The destruction of these sacred sites adds yet another injury to the Lakota, Dakota, and other indigenous peoples who bear the impact of fossil fuel extraction and its new routes of transportation. If constructed, this pipeline will continue to encourage oil consumption, which is listed as the single greatest cause of climate change, all the while harming those populations who have contributed the least to this environmental crisis. The intimidation by militarized police in riot gear and unlawful arrest are an attack on our First Amendment rights. And once again, it is those who hold this country the most dear who stand up for all of us. Many of us cannot leave our daily lives and stand with Standing Rock, but we can unite as a community, come together in spirit and cause, and raise awareness and money to provide these lawful protesters clean water and warm blankets as they stand for all of us. Miami stands with Standing Rock for our country and for the rights of all of our American brothers and sisters. Let us raise awareness and help those who are standing for all of us today. So together we are praying.